So a quick identification of all of the particular items that make up our streaming system. This is essentially what turns everything on and turns everything off. The switch. The two cameras are located in the ceiling to the left of the booth and down toward the platform on the right hand side. There is a third camera which is our uh, previously owned and used uh, Canon virtual church camera. It is still on the stand right now. It will move eventually, but for now it is focused on the pulpit. There's a monitor here that allows us to see all of the camera angles at once and make decisions as to which ones and at which time go to the stream. There are two laptops. This laptop allows us to view what our YouTube viewing audience views outside of the church so we can monitor video and audio by watching the YouTube channel that is streaming what it is uh, we are putting through our streaming system. This laptop contains software and media, in other words, um, artwork, uh, images, uh, text, and software that works in conjunction with this video switcher. This is the video switcher. As you can tell, it has a one, two, three, four. The camera next to the booth, the camera up closer to the platform. This one here <coughs> is actually this laptop at the moment, and I'll explain why this is on the third uh, switcher position. And four is this camera right here. So a quick review, pushing this button sends the video from this camera to the stream. Pushing this button sends the video from this camera to the stream. Pushing this button allows any media, video, images from this laptop to the stream. Pushing this button takes any video from this camera, which is focused at the moment on the pulpit, to the stream. So this is the video switcher. This makes the decisions via these four buttons what people will see on YouTube, which we can monitor through this particular laptop. This item here is called a camera controller. It looks a little daunting, lots of buttons, and there are lots of buttons here, but there are only so many that you use. What we mostly focus on is the camera one and camera two button here, and these buttons on the number pad which allow us to pick presets of camera one and camera two. If we have to move a camera at any time, we use this joystick to move the position or the zooming uh, properties of the camera. And this is a screen here that tells us uh, basically what's going on, but in my experience, you won't be looking at this screen a whole lot. I've placed two cards, taped them down, which gives us presets for both cameras. For instance, camera one in the preset is the pulpit, two is the worship team, three is piano, leader right, leader left, drums, floor, mic, whole sanctuary, communion table. And then from camera two, the uh, preset one, you can see, are pretty much identical. They just take them from a different angle. Camera three is fixed in the pulpit the entire time. There is an identical one over here, in case you feel like you want to look left or right. They're both taped down. There's also a manual for the camera here if you want to do some nighttime reading. So to get started, I've opened up both laptops and we're now going to power on this switch right here. So we push on the top and we'll give you a view of how this powers up. You can see by the lights on the ATEM Mini Pro, which is our video switcher, 
that a lot of things have lit up and that the pressing changes color when necessary. We'll talk about these basic buttons here in a few moments. The video controller, the camera controller I should say, has a, uh, a ream of information, particularly with IP addresses and that sort of thing, which we really don't have to fuss with. I've already set up all of this material on a switch in here, a computer switch, network switch I should say. And everything is connected appropriately, so we'll talk about that in a moment. You'll see that the laptops did not boot up yet, so we simply go over and turn those two on. Each of these laptops has a name, SNES Stream 1, SNES Stream 2, I believe. And you can tell that they are both booting up. And up here we have what's called the Multi-View Monitor. The Multi-View Monitor allows us to see, first of all, program. Program is what people will see on YouTube. Whatever is on this screen, they will see on YouTube because that is the program. The preview is what we are going to select on the switcher, which is what the next view the people on YouTube will see. So this is what we get set up in order to send to the stream. Program is the stream. Preview is so we can get a good look at things first before we send it to the stream. Always remember that. This is the one people see. This is the one we want to look at before we make a decision for people to see it. Below that, whatever camera one sees, you will see in the first block. So camera one is there. That's the view camera one has. This is the block camera two sees at the moment. So camera two is seeing this. Camera three, as you might recall from the number three button, is this laptop, which I'll explain more in a minute. Camera four, which as you can tell right here, is black, is this camera right here. This camera needs to be turned on in order for the camera to actually view something. So we switch that on at the top. When it starts to see something in the viewer, you will notice in the camera four position down here that that's what it's looking at, the pulpit. So camera four right now is on the pulpit. We'll adjust that later. Camera three is on this laptop. Camera two is right here. Camera one is up there. What people online watching the service see all the time is what's on program. What we are preparing for them to see will be on preview until we switch it to program. I'll talk more about these squares at the very bottom here later. This one here, you will have to keep an eye on. It's our audio, but these other things right here, basically on a need to know basis, except for when we are on air. And then we will show you how to determine that. And <clears throat> the most important block on the very bottom of the multi-viewer screen is the audio block. That just tells us that people watching YouTube, which we will be able to monitor on this one, are getting audio from our service. And I will show you how that happens through this little item called the ATEM Mini Pro. So our laptops both open up essentially the same way. We get a sign-in screen by just tapping the space bar and we type in 3476 which is the last which are the last four numbers of the church phone number. 
3476. And now both laptops are open. We are now going to navigate to um, YouTube on this one and to the ATEM software, the ATEM Mini Pro software on this one for the time being. So we go to Microsoft Edge and pull up YouTube. After clicking on YouTube, you should notice that it'll come up to the Sumnaz VC YouTube channel. Just simply navigate over to the channel by choosing your channel and choose your channel. When you do that, you will be in the right place because when we actually do start our live stream, the next window up will be our live stream. So we are on the correct channel right now. On our right side laptop, we are going to navigate to this little icon at the very end. It is our ATEM Mini software. So we're going to go to the one at the very end and open that up. And you will see the A10 Mini will pop up there. We are going to connect to it. And you'll see that it is looking for the A10 software. And when you finally see this come up, you'll know that you've reached your destination and the software is installed. Most of this will already be done for you before you even arrive at church, so don't worry about that. At the very bottom, you will see some choices here. We are going to go to Switcher, which is the last one over right here. And then you should see a virtual version of this. So you'll notice that number one is red, number two is green. I don't know how easy that is to see on the camera. So if I look over here, it tells me that program is red, preview is green. Now off camera, I'm going to press another button on the video switcher. I'm going to hit number three and you'll see that that has changed. I'll hit two and then I'll hit one. And you'll see that the preview is changing, three, four. So whatever happens on one or the other, it reflects on the other. This is here for a couple of reasons. Mostly a button over here with on air. And more about that later. Another reason it's here is because of the media tab, which is right down here at the bottom. Media tab. If I scroll over to there, and it's hard to hold the camera and do this and try to look in two places at once, but let's see if we can actually do it. Here we go. So now we have bits of text that are transparent and we can superimpose on the screen while the pastor is speaking or someone else is speaking. We have a closing bit of artwork here. Not a whole lot in here at the moment, but we will add to it as we go. For instance, these things here, if we drag into this block down here, will appear on what the audience and YouTube audience sees. So you'll notice there's nothing in the bottom corner of the program screen. But we have this here. So I'm going to switch back to our switcher for a moment. And then I'm going to hit this little button over here called On Air right here. If I hit that, now I look up at the screen, you'll see Summerside Church of the Nazarene, which is basically our little calling card in the bottom corner, also known as a lower third in the television world. So that allows us to control what gets superimposed on the audience's screen. We'll talk more about that later. If you want to get back and forth between the video switcher, which is this view down here, 
to the media view again you just select the different tabs there and that's all basically all you will need so we're going to switch back there now we're going to come out of this and believe it or not open up another YouTube channel for a moment and you'll see why so we're going to minimize this minimize that and we are going to open YouTube on this laptop as well so now we have identical YouTube channel screens but now on the right hand side we are going to go I'm going to navigate over there again excuse my crazy mouse work I'm holding a camera at the same time we're going to click on this little icon right there and when we do you see upload video and go live you're going to click on go live when you click on go live this black screen with a red line going across goes through don't panic you're not live yet so far so good now once this is up and ready you'll see it says here connect streaming software to go live you will be able to find your stream once you go live we've already set up what's called the default stream key and everything that is needed to go live via YouTube the only thing that you need to do to go live which will probably be done before you get to church anyway uh, to save you all of that is to go over here and this video switcher the ATEM Mini Pro remember that this is the video switcher it determines what goes out to the stream via the four cameras this is the camera controller it only allows you to change presets and positions whether it's pan tilt or zoom of the cameras this is what sends information video and audio out to the stream and this program here is actually going to tell you if you are alive and you'll see in a moment right now you have nothing up in this corner that indicates that you are live or on this side that indicates that you are live you just have a spinning wheel so I'm going to pull back I'm now going to go over here our cameras are on our laptops are on our video switcher is on and our camera controller is on so I'm going to go up to this top button which says on air I'm going to press this top button it turns red I go back up here you'll notice the change live you see a countdown we are already live you'll notice in this corner end stream so when we are completely done we click that to end our stream but right now we are live so how do I know what the people at home are seeing well right now I'm just going to refresh this screen for a moment let's see what happens when I refresh this screen watch on the left hand side you will now see a new window that says live so we are now live it actually says that it's February the 13th and starts at 11 or 2130 that'll all be gone by the time you do your own live stream so if I were to click on this right now and open up this live stream this is what people at home are seeing so we are actually broadcasting live at the moment you will see a reflection of that same thing here this is actually for my purposes to make sure that all of the elements of my stream are in place and that I am indeed live a bit of statistic happening but this is what people at home will see now if I give them this camera view here this is what they should see at home now the audio you're hearing my voice is actually coming through the camera the audio the people at home will be hearing will be coming through the ATEM switcher down here as I mentioned this controls video and audio that eventually end up in people's living room so in order for us not to waste airtime and to prolong a test stream we are going to assume that we are at the end of our church service 
and we are going to end the stream. You can do it in a couple of different ways. You can actually shut the stream off here, but I would advise that you go to the keypad, uh, to the uh, mouse pad, I should say, and go up to end stream and click and you will ask, you will be asked, do you want to end stream? No, not yet, or end. So we are going to end. So once that ends, you'll notice that we're done. You'll see that this will come to a close here in a minute. This is always several seconds behind. You'll also notice that the on air is still on there until we take off. this button right here. If we press that, you'll notice that we are now off the air. And one of the things we didn't talk about is to make sure that before we go live that we put in the title correctly, which in this case, Summerside Church at the Nazarene live stream February 13th, but basically we can edit this, go in there, and do basically anything we want, change the date, and make sure that whatever happens in this box will appear at the bottom of the screen to ensure that people know they're watching the right service, the live service on the correct date. So once that is corrected in there, hit save and you're good to go. And just remember when you're ready to go live, Go to your live button on air and you will see things change on this black screen first that gives you all of the on this black screen here first that gives you all of your YouTube statistics going live before people out there in YouTube land will actually see it. This screen which is the second lower screen on your multi view it'll say on air only if your on-air button is pressed here. It just means that your video switcher is live to YouTube. The question might come up, why have YouTube on two laptops? Well, this is to get you on to the stream. This is to allow you to view and monitor what other people are seeing on the stream. If there are video issues, if there are audio issues, you will see them here. However, we are going to just maneuver out of this for a second. And I'm going to minimize this screen. And I'm going to go to this little folder here called Countdown. And I'm going to open that up. All right, the countdown at the beginning of the service, the current one anyway, is on left laptop. So we're going to open that up. There we go, and we see that there is a video in there. Double click on that. It will open up to the 10 minute countdown and it keeps going and going and going. Now, if you will recall from an earlier session, it is camera three. So after we go to our YouTube on the right laptop and initiate the live stream and we go live by hitting this on air button. We should already have this up on the laptop and have camera three, which is now in preview, in the program position. So when we do go live, that is already playing so that the people at home say, oh, I've got nine minutes and seven seconds to get my coffee together and get over to the sofa to watch the church service. When that gets down to zero, so I'm on the last 10 seconds or so on the live stream. When I get to zero, I'm going to basically hit auto, which will take me into the church so that people know that they are ready to celebrate with us. And there's auto and we've switched over. I then turn the audio on over here and I am ready 
to start making decisions about what happens next. So that's how you get your countdown on. Once you're done with the countdown, you no longer need this. Get out of the countdown screen by closing this video and clicking on the YouTube icon over here, which will bring you to our Sumnaz VC YouTube channel, which will have the live stream playing on it so that you can view it, monitor the audio and the video. Okay, so let's talk about the video switcher for a moment. As you can tell, red, green. Whatever I hit is red. It's camera one right now. Just camera one. Red. That's what appears at program. If it's red, it's program. If it's green, which is going to be my next choice, which I chose four, in this particular case, four, as you will remember, is this camera. This camera is on the pulpit. If it's green, it is preview. And you will see it in the preview window. Red, program. That's what people in YouTube see. Green, preview. So how do you get from preview to program? Well, we're making a decision over here, an artistic decision, that we're using the auto mode. So when I hit auto, this switches. So I'm going to go back. One is red, four is green. So I want four to become my program, but it is in preview mode at the moment. I'm going to pull back so you can see this. When I hit the auto button over here, and I'm going to hit it, you'll hear me hit it, you will see what is on preview change to program. I'm hitting auto right now. So you see the transition was a bit of a fade, and preview went the program by me hitting the auto button and you'll notice now that the number camera number four is now red because it is in program and they just flip-flopped camera number one is back to preview it only does that just because you've positioned nothing else to go into preview but what if I want it camera two, which is up here? What if I wanted that to be in preview so that I could send it to the stream as program? Well, currently number one is preview. It doesn't matter what I press next. It's not going to affect what is currently in program because I need to hit the auto button for that to change. So I'm going to select camera two. You'll notice it changes to green. So camera two is up there on the ceiling closer to the platform. It is now in preview. I want to send it to program. It's in preview. Program is actually what people are watching now. So I go back there's my preview is green, program is red. As soon as I hit the auto button, you will see them change. Now my camera two is program and flip-flopped. Camera four is on preview. So let's switch to camera one. We want to go preview in camera one which now looks like this at the moment because these are what our cameras are seeing. This is preview. I know I'm saying this a lot, but just getting you used to it and this is program. So I'm going to switch the camera one to preview because I want to go to camera one next. So when I switch, hit camera one, it should turn green for preview. Remember that camera two is still at program. So one, as you can tell, is now at preview. Two is program. One is green, preview. Two is program, red. As soon as I hit the auto button over here, that will change. One is now program. Two is now preview. So regardless of what I do down here, 
regardless of where my cameras are pointed, the only thing that my YouTube audience will see is program. The next thing they will see is preview. So get what you want them to see next in preview. You can make all kinds of mistakes here. But this is what your audience online will see. So over here we have three buttons on the switcher. Cut, auto, not sure if you can see that. Cut, auto, and FTB, fade to black. I'm gonna press this button, but watch the program screen. I'm pressing it now. When in doubt, if you have an issue with camera, you can fade to black, which is what I just did. Now it's flashing red. It may not look red on the camera, but it's flashing red, telling you that you are faded to black. Now when I press that button again, watch what happens. It comes back. Fade to black is now off. Auto fades, depending on how I have this little series of six buttons set up, the auto button fades or transitions this screen to that screen. So right now we're set up on a what's called a mix. So when I hit mix, you'll see preview switch to program. Preview, switch the program. I didn't hit it hard enough, that's why it's stuck there a bit. Preview, switch the program. Preview, switch the program, that's the auto. If I was to hit cut, it's just a very sharp cut with no transition. It just slams over, it doesn't fade in. So that's cut. Auto again, nice and smooth. Cut very hard. So that's cut, auto, fade to black. <clears throat> so this is the camera controller. We are going to pay particular attention to these two buttons, camera one and two, the call button, and to this number pad which are our preset numbers, and the enter button. When we manipulate these, the angle of the camera will change regardless of which one we are on. So, here's camera one. This is the output of camera one. Camera one is on the piano. If we look over here, camera one, Preset number three is piano. So technically we are on preset three. If I was to change the preset, then this picture here will change. So I'm going to go to camera one, call, I'm not calling the preset, and I'm going to call preset one on camera one. Camera one preset should be the pulpit. So I hit camera one, call, preset one. I am now going to hit enter. Let's see what happens here. So it goes immediately to the pulpit. So if the pastor's up, there's a good chance you want that one. Well, what if there is a scripture reader at the floor microphone coming up? The scripture reader at the floor microphone. Preset seven is floor microphone on camera one. So, camera one, call seven. When I hit enter, watch what happens. So it goes to the floor microphone where the music stand is so that we have a close up of that person. There are many presets on both cameras. I have programmed nine into each camera. You'll notice they're all the same. Pulpit, pulpit, worship team, worship team, piano, leader right, leader left, drums, floor mic, back half of sanctuary, whole sanctuary, communion table. Well, what is the purpose of that? So this is the purpose of having two cameras. At the moment, 
We have camera one on the floor mic, uh, which is preset seven. So if the pastor was coming up next, we wouldn't adjust camera one because that's on program and the camera movement would be very distracting. So we set up the camera on the pulpit mic in preset on camera two. So you always prepare your next shot over here with a different camera, then switch to it when you need to. So we are in camera one on the floor mic. If we know that the pastor's coming up next, we need to prepare the pulpit on camera two. Well, let's find the pulpit for camera two. So here's camera two. The pulpit setting is preset one. So I can go camera two, call one. And as I hit enter, camera two should go to the pulpit, as you can tell, which the YouTube audience does not see because we're currently on the floor mic. Having said that, we are now ready to move to the preview, uh, to, sorry, to the camera two uh, scene simply by hitting auto. So when I hit auto, the scripture reader finishes, I hit auto, watch what happens to the programming screen. We are now at the pulpit. And let's say that the worship team was up next. Well, we don't want to switch this camera. We want to switch this camera. So this is camera one. We go to camera one. The worship team, the entire team is on preset two. So we go camera one, call two, and when I hit enter, it should change to a full worship team shot. And notice that the uh, YouTube audience never sees this. So there's the full worship team shot. So you can now see the point of having two cameras. While one of them is in program mode, you are prepping in preview mode the other camera so that to get to your next shot you simply auto over to that and you're good to go. Let's do two more. Currently we are here. Now while the pastor is speaking if we want to give a shot of the full church for instance just to give them the audience a YouTube audience a uh, shot of the entire sanctuary while well, we look down at that camera one is not being used because it's in preview well whole sanctuary is preset eight on camera one so we go camera one and we're going to call up preset eight and when we do that here's preview mode camera one and it's going to pull back and give an entire sanctuary shot which is kind of cool when the pastor is speaking so that you can actually give the home viewer an idea of what it's like to be in the church right now so when i hit auto to switch they now see what is on camera one sanctuary shot now if uh, somebody has an announcement coming up on the floor mic you can say, well, there's camera two in preview. I'll just go to camera two to the floor mic. Since each camera has a shot of the same position in the church. So camera two floor mic is seven. So we go camera two, call seven. And when I switch that, <coughs> camera two should switch to the floor mic. So we are ready for the announcements. So the pastor is done speaking. We switch to announcements. Voila. So at any time, if you want to switch to the pulpit, because one of your uh, robotic cameras is not on a preset on the pulpit and you need to get there fast, you can switch over to camera four, which is this one right here. And when I switch over to camera four, in preview, there it is. Hit auto, there it is. So given the possibilities with the different camera angles, which all point to the same nine locations, you can see how you can take advantage of these two cameras 
to the point where when you're on one, you can prep the other and still have the same shots, relatively speaking, to work from. So we'll come, we'll come back here for a second. Remember that anything in program is what your audience at home is seeing. Anything in preview, anything in preview. Now that's kind of your work site. That's where you get things together. That's where you prep your angles, prep your camera, and uh, whatever else you need to actually prepare it to deliver to the home viewing audience. One other thing, which is kind of cool, and that's simply this. If for some reason you have some action that's going on, someone's making a presentation, for instance, let's put preview over into program for a minute. Okay. So we have something going on that it just seems to be a larger scene than your camera shot is actually doing. For instance, a presentation where the person behind the floor mic is making a presentation to three or four other people and there's no particular preset for that. Well, you could do one of a couple of things. You could say, what's easiest to shoot to get that entire scene in? Well, you might want to try the worship team setting, if you look over, it's two. So we'll just switch over to camera one, call two. Let's see what happens there. And you can see it is turning there. So there's one option. Camera one, call two. So I'm going to put camera one in preview mode here for a second. So camera one is in preview mode. So there I have a wider angle. So that's one way of doing it. There's the floor mic. I pulled back. Now I have the entire front of the platform. You could switch to the whole sanctuary, which is eight. Camera one, call eight. Go to preset. That gives you an even wider view. Not a very good close-up, but a wider view. But you do have another option. One that involves this guy right here. So let's go back to the camera one floor mic. Camera one, call seven. Now we're back at the floor mic. So let's put that into program mode. So we're live. And let's say the announcer, a person giving the announcements, has three or four people up there and they're cut off. So I'm going to go to this joystick and I'm going to twist back. So I'm going to turn back very slowly. And you see that it's zooming out. So if I turn the other way, I zoom back in. So there is an option to include more people or property into the shots. The other thing is, what if they happen to walk across there and you don't have time to zoom? If you tilt the joystick this way, the camera will move that way. So I'm turning it slightly. Now what if I want to take it back? Take it back. And the same thing applies, let's say you want to see the screen. If you position and turn up or down, the camera will pan, or sorry, tilt up and down. So there's tilting up, there's tilting down. Now let's say you just want to zone in on something before shooting it. If I went to a very specific location, I wanted to see the cross, and then I would zoom in. So you have all kinds of options to do with this joystick. Zoom in, zoom out, tilt up, tilt down, pan left, sorry, pan right, pan left. And as soon as you go back and hit a preset again, it forgets all the joystick 
and automatically goes back to the preset. So the joystick is independent of any of the presets that are set here. So you can see how this can become very convenient to do things that our presets are not set up for. And as you remember, when I hit camera one, if you want to just tilt it, you just touch the camera one button. There's camera one. I'm going to zoom in here with my video camera now. I'm going to start manipulating the joystick and you can see what it's going to be doing. You see as it turns, I'm panning right, now I'm panning left. I'm going to tilt down tilting up, and so on. So you see it responds instantly to the actions that you perform on this particular joystick right here. So using the audio up and audio down buttons, you can control the volume, how much volume that comes from the sound mixer into the switcher and in order to get good volume to our YouTube audience we need to make sure that this is somewhere near the top of the yellow and sometimes occasionally peeking into the red that's optimum right in there so if you find that it's way too low like down here somewhere just simply go to the up button over here and just Press, 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 press until you're roughly where the yellow meets the red and you'll have perfect audio for your live stream on YouTube. Excellent. That's all you need to know for audio. So uh, make sure that you kind of keep an eye on that occasionally. Don't sweat over it though. So a quick word about graphics. First of all, you go to the ATEM software, and we're going to be on the Media tab. You'll see we have four graphics up here. Two lower ones called Lower Thirds, sometimes referred to as Bugs because they're in the corners, and two full screen graphics for the end of the service. One talks about giving, the other one is the contact information for the church. These two are transparent text graphics that overlay when the pastor speaking and one of them is basically on all the time says Summerside Church of the Nazarene so this one right here we'll show you how to get that one on so we go from uh, we drag I should say click on this one literally drag it over into this square right here and when we do that we can now go back to the switcher this would all be set up ahead of time. And we go to this thing on the DSK1, that's downstream key. And when we click this on air button right here, you will see that appear on the corner of this program screen so that everyone at home can see that we're Summerside Church of the Nazarene. So this will turn red when I click it. Now when I go up here, you'll see Summerside Church of the Nazarene. That can stay on the whole entire service. Now when the pastor gets up to do announcements or preach, we can, on the media tab, click in the next one down, if we click on that one, you will see that Summerside Church in Nazarene is there and it'll say Reverend Trevor Feltham and it's behind the program. Uh, word there. The program word is only for your purposes on the multi-screen, not on the YouTube version. So it would say Reverend Trevor Feltham. And when he steps down, if you wanted, you could just click this area here again and choose the first one, which is Summerside Nazarene. As you could tell, it's gone. Now, at the end of the service, we can just go back to media tab while he's given the benediction and we can grab this guy right here drag him over here and you'll notice that when I drag him on there it drops into the program screen right away so we may not want that right away so we go back to switcher 
and we say, all right, let's just take that downstream key off. And as you can tell, it is now off. So you could load that, shut off your downstream key, on air button, off, load that into the media tab, into the square that I showed you. You can review this video to see where I dragged it to. And when you're ready at the end of the service, you can either hit still, which is a button down on the switcher. Watch what happens when I hit still. There's our media. I hit still. It goes up to preview. Then I hit auto. It goes into program. So that's one way of getting it over there, the same way that the cameras operate. So we'll do that again. I will take it off of still. Take that off of program as well. And let's put a couple of camera angles back on there. There we go. So now we have it in the media corner. So when I hit auto, sorry, when I hit still down here, it goes to preview. When I hit auto, it goes to program. The other way of doing it is to just click your on-air downstream key uh, till it turns red, then it turns on, or turn it off. To me, it's better to put it there on your media tab first, and I will go back and do that again. So let's put uh, one of the other tabs up there. This part's a little clunky, but it does work really well. So now we're at Summerside Church of the Nazarene again. And let's put a, there's a camera angle there, two camera angles, that's fine. So now we have our lower graphic there. We go back to the switcher. And we could go to, like I said, DSK downstream key and hit that. Turns red, graphic appears. Now let's just shut that off. Go back to media. Drag the end graphic over, drop it in there. So when it's dropped in there, it does not appear here because we turned off the downstream key. It appears in the media box. So when I choose still, as in still image, I'm going to push that button. You'll see it goes to preview, just like the camera. Then when I hit auto, pastor gives the benediction, we put it in program. We leave it there for a few minutes, going back to this media tab, and I'm going to drag the second one in right there. When I let that go, watch what happens here. That changes immediately, which is what we want. After a minute or so of that, we hit fade to black, service is over. When that's done, we will take ourselves off the air by going to YouTube on that laptop that we showed you earlier and clicking End Stream. End of story. This will take some time and this will take some practice, but at the very end of it all, it's a very cool system, very interesting system. When it's all said and done, power off both laptops. No need to do anything here or here or here. Simply go over and hit this button at the bottom and you're done. It should look like this. The laptops are running on battery right now. You simply shut those down. End of stream.